Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, it's Clay Ramage. Back again with another Goodwill Bins haul today. And let me turn my light on, I just realized I didn't have the light on. Oh, there, now I look a little brighter. Um, so yeah, went to the Goodwill Bins this morning. Um, didn't find very many hard goods, but I found a number of great books. So we'll uh, cover those. So if you're new to the channel, welcome. Thanks for subscribing everybody. And thanks for following along on our fun little adventures of finding great stuff for resale um so yeah i'm just gonna get into it i found we'll go through the books last um but i found several pieces of artwork that i'm excited about there's this print it's of an amish buggy with a family it is a numbered print it's 160 out of 750 and this is an artist by the name of diane Grebner, Grebner, something like that. Um, so yeah, so she's uh, fairly popular. It's probably a twenty to twenty-five dollar print. It's she's not a high dollar collector, but considering I paid fifty cents for these smaller items, fifty cents each, um, it's definitely a great deal. This particular one is um, oh, that's the printer. I'm drawing a blank on the name all of a sudden. But it's called the whistling boy barefoot whistling boy walking down the path barefoot um early 1900s printing it does have some one water stain right there um and it's down here in the corner too and you can usually tell if you look at the back of the cardboard if it's hard to tell on the front then you can kind of zero in on where the water damage is but yeah there's one listed on ebay for 100 bucks of this particular print um, not that that one is near that, but that's probably, a, you know, again, a $20 to $25 print. And eh, I'm breaking stuff. And then we have Bessie P's print. The girl with the dog in the corner. Isn't that cute? The frame's a little ding there. But again, for $0.50, cents, it's a great print. And then the more exciting print. And, the, and they are reproducing this particular one. This is Jerry Garcia. Um, it's designed to look like a pencil sketch. This is a famous picture of him with his guitar. Uh, this looks like it's signed Luke 94. Um, but it honestly, yeah, it's a print. I have to look closely to see if it's a print or not. Um, and I'm going to put that down at the pink elephant. We have a lot of dead, Grateful Dead fans that come through, record collectors, stuff like that. So that will be a... $35 item down at the pink elephant. So that's exciting. Um, and then I saw this box, Royal Worcester. Royal Wor Worcester is always um, collectible pie server. And yes, indeed, it's in there. It's the pie server. Cherry is the uh, style. It is marked on the handle as well. Um, these sell well for me, $20, $25. seems like that's kind of the theme for today, $20, $25 for most things. Oh, this is for my personal use. I saw this thing, it's, it was a whole uh, metal tin full of cups and different things, but it's cocoa, winter cocoa flavored drink mix. And then it, then, uh, it had a whole recipe book to make different kinds of hot chocolate, basically. Still new sealed in the pack, so I was like, mine. I love hot chocolate, especially in the winter time. So that'll be fun. Um, I also pick up these cotton head scarves. This one is all cotton, 100% in blue. Um, made in the USA. Again, I don't know why, but I do well with these. I list them on eBay, sell them, you know, not for big money by any means, but sell them for five to eight dollars. They're super easy to ship. So off they go. Oh, and by the way, Saturday's video, this will be the uh, Saturday after Thanksgiving that's coming up. This is a preview of what's going to be in that video. Um, I picked up a large lot of scarves in an auction. So I'm going to cover those. These will be listed on eBay by the time the video comes out. So if you're interested in any of the scarves that I show, you can just go right out to eBay and buy them. Because um, I know, you know, at this point, there may be a few that are damaged and whatever that might not be listed um so if you don't see them listed make sure you check the 
sold listing to see if maybe it's sold and if it's not there you could contact me and I can let you know whether it was just in too poor a condition or whatever but anyway so that's a preview of what's coming up I also found this cute little owl planter it's very small It'd be great for a little succulent wouldn't it and uh, it's an UNESCO piece still has the label on both pieces so that was a fun little find um I found this cute little this is a, an original painting I paid by the pound on this one because it's very light so I paid I spent 28 bucks today all total um and a majority of that was books obviously uh, very little I spent one two three two and a half dollars on pictures and probably five dollars on everything else found this cute little box look at that engraving on the top it's been you know dyed different colors it's a nice vintage box it's got a nice blue lining here not sure if it it um, it did have another lining in the bottom it looks like it's missing because there's some still some blue fabric dyed to the bottom um but yeah it's still just a beautiful box it could easily be relined to store your treasures in and look at that clasp isn't that beautiful it's a very light box too which was kind of nice especially when you're paying by the pound and then i found this copper piece it's um you know got that great aged copper look to it it's a wall piece to hang on uh you could use it as i guess as a sieve but it's uh, designed to be a decorative piece to hang on the wall i'm quite sure of that probably from the 70s and uh, back when that early american period of decorating was in style so that was probably the more expensive item all right oh and this is another item i picked up for myself was this little wooden carved um scroll work old car and it's marked on the bottom of the guy who did it so this will go into my personal collection and go hang on the wall in the other room so and again it was really light i just dropped it all right now I'm going to get into all these great books. Hans Brinker or The Silver Skates by Dodge. Um, I did not buy, find this particular version, um, so I have to do some more research. But this is from 1908, so that's a good copy. Um, then Little Men by Alcott. I also found Little Women. This particular one is a 1934 edition. Uh, pretty pretty good condition, a little warped. And it does have some staining and quite a bit of dirt on the top. But I think a majority of these came from one family because the inscriptions in the front page are mostly to the same person. And what's funny is the address given is Hopkins, Minnesota. And this is where my office is, is Hopkins, Minnesota. So. I brought them back to where they probably came from, even though I had to drive all the way to Chaska to find them. Um, but yeah, they have some, just some great little items. This is Cooper's Last of the Mo... Mo ah, why can't I say it? Mohicans. Cooper's Last of the Mohicans. This is the Macmillan Pocket Classic. The small size. So, and then it looks like somebody had to give a book report on this particular person. This one's from 1907. So, another fun little small book. I was, there's a number of smaller books, which is kind of cool. This one is The Canterbury Tales. Um, 19, this is the, a later one, 1952. So it seems like most of these are either 1900, turn of the century, or 1950s. Here's the Little Women book. This one is the, an older version, but it's not in very good condition. But again, this is a great one just to, because the spine still shows well, to group with some other greenish books. Um, this particular book, this is, this is a fun one, Lovely Mary. There's two by this author, but this is the Lovely Mary by the author of Mrs. Wiggs. Um, but that's not the other book I have by Alice Rice. And this one was given as a Christmas gift in 1903. But the exciting thing was it has this book well, they were using it as a bookmark, but it's a postcard from 1913. Um, and I love 
what it says. It says, Erica, uh, March 15th, 1913. Dear Helen, how are you? I suppose you are enjoying your vacation in the full sense of the word. Well, so am I. Goodbye. Um, Delia? D-E-L-I-A? Delia? So, <laughs> I just thought that was hilarious. But she must have went to a forested area somewhere on her vacation, since that's where the postcards are from. So, that was pretty cool, I thought. All right. The Far Lands by James Norman Hall. Still has the dust jacket on it. In very good condition. There is a little water damage to the bottom. Now they dig into this a little more. This one's from 1950. Egyptian theme, I believe. Um, this is a Robin Hood edition. The spine is missing. Um, so it's not a very good edition but there's a cute little inscription in pencil from one child to another. So I thought that was pretty cool. The Boy's Life of Theodore Roosevelt. This particular book is probably $15 to $20. Um, I'm not sure why this page is cut off at the top, but it's a very clean cut, kind of like it was almost done at the factory that way. But... Um, so yeah, but this is an early 1900s version. Uh, I don't see the... 1922. So. Then, The Fighting Chance by Chambers. Again, this one, not in the best of condition. These obviously were stored somewhere where was, there's a little bit of moisture. Um, Thunderhead by Mary O'Hara. This is the second copy of this one that I have. Um, 1944 is dated there. 1943 is the year. So this person was an avid reader, obviously, because they have a lot of great books. Yeah, here's the other one. Sandy by Alice Rice. Um, and both of them say by the author of Mrs. Wiggs of Cabbage Patch. And this one's dated 1905. So... got great illustrations in it so the walls of Jericho by Paul Wellman um, it's got a tornado in it so I don't think it's the Jericho in the biblical version this is a novel 1947 so yeah again it's not in the best of condition um, Horse and the Buggy Doctor. This one's pretty cool. I love the dust cover. And this one is to mother on her 75th birthday, April 4th, 1939. So that's pretty cool little inscription. And the book is published in 1938. Fourth printing. Pretty cool. Like that one. Long, long ago by Alexander Wolcott. And what's interesting is this one has another, has this Wings magazine from 1943 pasted in the beginning of it. So sometimes they would publish a small uh, preliminary copy to go with the first editions when it first came out. 1953, original copyright registrations each year, 1930 to 40. Copyright 1943. Oh, 1943. Oh, yeah, I read it wrong. Um, so, yeah, so this is the very first edition of this particular book. I'm, I can't remember if I looked it up. I think I did. It's got a little illustration on the cover. Guy's face. Pretty fun. All right. This one is potentially one of the most valuable. Ben Hur, first edition. Um, and this says, Merry Christmas to Ben and Anna from Rob, Reno, Nevada, 1889. Now, this particular book of Ben-Hur is from 1880. So, somebody got this as a Christmas gift in 1889, which is pretty cool. Pretty amazing. Um, but it does have a few condition issues. There's one listed on eBay for $389. Um, don't know if they're going to get it. Um, 
there's others of this particular one that sold for ten dollars take your pick but it has potential the young fireman of lakeville this is another novel from the 40s i believe do, 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 do. Nope, 1937. Alright, To Those Who See. Another, that's a poem book. Sorry, I'm getting distracted. There's I keep getting notifications popped up. I should probably turn my notifications off when I make a video so I'm not so distracted. Anyway, 30 More Famous Stories by Baldwin. Now, what's interesting about this one is I can find listings of 50 more stories, but I can't find the 30 famous stories. Uh, this is published in 1905. American book entered at Stationery Hall, 30 more EP2. So I'll have to look that up and see what else I can find in that. Uh, my friend Flicka, another famous horse book, 1944. And there's the horse. <laughs> so, Swiss Family Robinson. This is a 1939 edition. Um, so, another. Well, I like picking up well known titles because those seem to uh, sell fairly well. Okay, so I found this Charlotte's Web. This is a first edition printing, and I was like, it's got papers sticking out of it, so I thought maybe the the paper, the pages were loose, but it isn't. It's actually the cover, the dust jacket, with a newspaper article about the author that was stuck in there, and a plastic bag from Barnes and Nobles when they must have issued a Charlotte's Web edition of a plastic bag. So somebody was collecting Charlotte Web stuff. This is a first edition it is not the very first printing, though. It's a 1952 first edition. There's the title page. Um, from what I understand, their first edition would have had the date code under here. This one does not have a date code. So it's a later printing. But still the first edition, as opposed to the reprinted editions. Later. It gets confusing with books, that's for sure. Son of a Hundred Kings, another novel. I didn't even look. Oh, this one has the little booklet in it, too. Oh, and that, see what happens when you have acidic paper? It leaves marks. The acid from the paper leaks into the other paper and leaves a stain. This is from 1950. So, another nice little author. And couple more books and then we're done. It says, Talks to Children About Jesus. This is a um, religious book, but here's what's, and again, this one is 19, 1895, um, one of the oldest books in the collection. But what is cool about it is it has this church bulletin from 1919 in it. St. Louis Park Hopkins Methodist Episcopal Churches. Um, and then it has, just lists different activities they're doing and then the Board of Trustees on the back. So this is a great, again, local piece, local history. Um, so I thought that was pretty cool. Oh, they have hmm, cool illustrations in there. Sorry, I should should show you. So there's like Solomon's Temple. <sighs> All right. And then it says The Civilization of the Renaissance in Italy by Burkhart. Um, this is a modern library edition, so it's not the first edition. It's a reprinted edition. Um, and this one actually sounded interesting, so I was actually thinking of reading this one myself. And that's what I do with some of these that I find fascinating. I take them home and I read them myself. So, all right, that's our Goodwill Bins haul for today. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll catch you next time.